Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Japan and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel a couple of times before. Now, these guys are another relatively new addition to the Japanese beer scene, but they've built up a very good reputation for themselves. They're quite a prolific brewery actually, and they're not afraid to try different styles. And that's one of the things that I always look for when I'm looking at new breweries that I haven't done anything from. But but the beers that these guys have been doing in recent times have gone down very, very well. The one that we're going to look at today is a style that I haven't tried from them before. It's a style that's quite close to my heart, actually, and it's a little bit of an unwritten rule on the channel that if I come across this style, I have to try it. So needless to say, I'm very, very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So yeah, for this review then, we are going to head a little bit north of me here in Osaka to Shiga Prefecture. We're going to go to Omi Hachiman City. And that means that we're going to have a look at another beer from Two Rabbits Brewing Company. So this particular beer is simply called Scotch Ale. It comes in at 7% ABV, and I think from the name you can tell what style this beer is. So yeah, this is one that I actually found in the Hanshin department store, if I remember correctly. In uh, Umeda Station in Osaka, and uh, you know, there is a little bit of a rule on the channel, like I say, if I come across a Scotch ale from a different country, I've got to try it. And I've had some really interesting beers of unusual styles from this brewery before, so that's just an added bonus. But yeah, definitely cool to try this one. If memory serves me correctly, this is my third or so Scotch ale that I've had brewed by Japanese breweries. The other one was uh, the one from Beard Beer, and I'm sure we had one. From, uh, from somebody else as well, actually, but the name of the brewery has gone right out of my head. But definitely cool to return to Two Rabbits once again. I do have a black IPA to look at from these guys as well, so you'll see that video at some point fairly soon. But in the meantime, let's crack on with this one then and see what it has in store for us. A 7% Scotch Ale from Two Rabbits Brewing Company in Omihachi Man City in Shiga Prefecture. So, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Two Rabbits Brewing Company before, and we will add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging systems. Just go in there, use the little search bar, put in your home, uh, hometown, state, county, province, whatever you like. If I've reviewed beers from the area that you search for, they will pop up and failing that you can check out the playlist of beers from a different country. You'll find this one in the Japanese playlist along with a number of other things and uh, you can of course check out the playlist of beers from other countries too because there are some really interesting things up there. But um, yeah let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a wee bit about Two Rabbits Brewing Company once again then. So Two Rabbits Brewing Company, as I mentioned already, are based in Omi Hachiman City in Shiga Prefecture, just on the eastern side of Lake Biwa, and they can be found in the heart of the old town with the old canals. So the brewery was founded in late 2017 by Ayako and Sean Collett, uh, along with Bakbatar Purev Ochir. So Sean is originally from Australia, but was born to New Zealand Kiwi parents, and he met Bato while they were studying for their MBA at Kyoto University together. But Bato worked for a number of years in the IT sector while Sean had been working in the oil and gas industry and Ayako had studied in Australia for a number of years and worked previously as a primary school teacher. But today she's running the company, she's the head of the company and runs the business side of things with Bato while Sean takes care of the brewing. Although I'm not 100% sure if Bato is still involved. I heard that he had moved on to something else so maybe those notes need corrected. Uh, but the name Two Rabbits comes from the old Japanese saying if you run after two rabbits then you won't catch either but originally these guys ran a very small production the first beer that I tried from these guys 
uh, was part of a very small order that Koji at Liquor Shop Asahiya did. It was a kind of Weizen with a few adjuncts in it, if I remember correctly. But uh, they were only producing very, very small amounts in bottles in the early days and a few things in cask as well. But they had two series, which was the original series and the classic bunny series, and they were running a tap room at the brewery, but they've since taken over a bar across the water, which is called the Rabbit Hutch, and it is literally just kind of down the street a little bit and uh, across the way. But in more recent times, they've been upgrading the brewery infrastructure and brewing more different styles, and they've started the canning their beers as well. And as of December 2023, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 165 different beers, according to Untapped. Uh, the last beer that we tried from these guys, I think, was an English bitter of some description. Uh, and that was actually pretty good, and that's a style that I don't normally like. And as I said, we've got a black IPA uh, from them outside that we'll need to try too. But I've seen random things actually from this brewery on uh, Liquor Shop Asahiya's Facebook page. So yeah, I keep an eye on what they're releasing. And it's quite nice to see that they're doing such a diverse array of beers because that keeps it interesting. And that's one of the cool things about the, the Japanese craft beer scene actually. There's a lot of breweries want to try different styles rather than just brewing IPAs and things like that all the time. But um, yeah, that's everything I can really tell you about Two Rabbits Brewing Company for the moment. I do hope that we can go up there and visit these guys at some point and do an out and about video. I know that uh, Nevit from uh, Japanese craft beer reviews will be living not too far away from these guys, so maybe that's something we can organize in the fairly near future, but uh, we'll see. But yeah, if you want to learn more about these guys, check out the brewery website and you'll find the link in the video description below, and you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. So um, yeah, to tell you a little bit about the beer itself, so I'll let you have a wee look at the artwork before we open up the can, but there you can see the Scottish Piper. It looks like this might be Royal Stuart Tartan that they're using for the kind of background on here. I remember uh, different military organisations, regiments and families and things like that have their own tartans. Football clubs these days as well. Uh, some of the castles in Scotland, such as my local castle, Stirling, uh, has its own tartan too. The universities tend to have their own registered tartans as well, but I think this one is Royal Stuart. Uh, but correct me on that if I'm wrong, I could well be wrong. But uh, yeah, Scotch Ale is 7% ABV. Uh, the malt base in this one is pale Munich chocolate crystal and melanoidin malts. It's hopped with Hallertau Mittelfru, which is quite an interesting choice actually, and it uses an Edinburgh yeast apparently. Um, so Mittelfru will be quite interesting in this one because if I was going to choose a German hop for a Scotch ale, I would probably go for Northern Brewer because that's quite popular in Dunkels and Doppelbox. If you're going to use a British hop or an English hop, the choice would be Bramling's Cross because those two hops are the ones that give you these nice kind of red fruity characters. So Hallertau Mittelfru is quite an interesting choice for this one actually. And it's got a good mix of uh, well, Munich and Crystal are both German malts as well. So I'm curious to see how this is going to turn out because it is mostly German ingredients that are in here uh, rather than, uh, than English and Scottish ingredients, which is a, a wee bit of a deviation from the, uh, from the norm. But turn out quite well. We get Scotch ales that are brewed with American ingredients. Um, but yeah, the Scotch ale is quite an interesting thing um, because there's a few different variations of this. Uh, in Scotland, we use the shilling system, which is like a slash and a line. And the idea was with the shilling scale that uh, the more malt was in your beer, the more alcohol you would have, and thus you would have to pay more tax. Um, so you had 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 shilling, and you also have the 160s, which are the beasts. Um, the term we heavy, I believe, was coined by the Americans when they got a hold of this style. Uh, I've not heard it being used all that often in Scotland, actually. Uh, but yeah, it's 7% ABV. I'm guessing that this one is going to be somewhere in the region of like a, a 70 or 80 shilling, actually. Most modern uh, Scotch ales, as they're called, are somewhere between 80 and 90 shilling in terms of their flavour profile. But we just need to see with this one. Uh, it's a 360 milliliter can. I couldn't tell you what I paid for this. I think it was like six or 700 yen, something like that. So that translates to about, yeah, $7 American. Uh, yeah, six euros, uh, five pounds 50 sterling, something like that. But let's get this guy open and we'll see how we get on. The can felt a little bit pressured there, so I just had to be careful with it. But we'll get this guy out into the glass. The Scotch Ale at 7% ABV from Two Rabbits Brewing Company in Omihachiman, Shiga, Japan. There we go. 
So, uh, that's that. Um, yeah, one or two little bits of sediment floating around in this one. Actually, I'm curious as to how old this beer is. Does it have a canned on date or anything? No. Um, yeah, it doesn't say. But yeah, I bought this one. I'm pretty sure I bought this one in... Um, in October when I was here actually, if memory serves me correctly. But yeah, anyway, as you can see, this beer poured with a lovely kind of half finger of a frothy, I would say kind of light fawn colored head. It's fading away in the middle just to be a thin foamy layer, but round the edge of the glass, you're getting that thicker kind of ring. Some medium sized bubbles uh, sitting on the surface of the liquid there and a few lighter ones just going up toward the uh as you go up the glass there but color wise this is pretty cool actually it's kind of like a dark chestnut type color i really do like how this piece is together but uh yeah the color of your beer of course uh, is dependent on a few things one the type of malts you use is going to play a role to the length of your wort boil will play a role because the longer you boil the wort more the stew is caramelized unless you get a darker color of beer that can be quite an important thing when it comes to scotch ales but any barrel aging that you do or any adjuncts you put into the beer will affect its color too but it's not too common to uh, put adjuncts into scotch ales actually barrel aging is fairly common in the states uh, and some scottish breweries and european breweries do it as well but yeah color wise this is very very nice as i said I'm curious as to whether this has had a slightly longer wort boil because it has got a little bit of that natural haze to it and things as well. But it could well just be unfiltered. But yeah, when you shine the light through this, it gives you that lovely kind of dark stained mahogany and chestnut colour. It's a really nice looking beer, actually. The way that this piece is together is, uh, is great. So um, take a little bit of time and just enjoy that. But I think we've said everything we need about the appearance. Not too much in the way of visible carbonation with this one. Let's have a wee look at the nose and see what it's all about. That's nice. I'll say straight away, it gives you the type of aroma that you expect, but because it's got the German ingredients, it just smells that little bit different, you know? You can smell that it's German, the bready character is more kind of smooth and German rather than being a little bit more grainy because of the Scottish and English malts. Um, and the fruitiness is just, a little, the green component is just a little bit brighter uh, and more kind of grassy as opposed to being a bit more herbal and earthy because of the German hop rather than the, the English Bramlings cross. But the fruits come out nicely. You've got the maltiness in there, the brown sugar and the bread. Yeah, it gives you all the sorts of aroma that you would expect. And just going from that aroma, like I said earlier, I do suspect this one's probably going to be like an 80, uh, 70 or 80 shilling level beer, this one. But we'll be able to tell a little bit more when we uh, actually taste the thing. But let's break down that aroma and just describe it for you a wee bit more in depth. So for me, the aroma on this one, it really leans toward that kind of nice big brown bready and sweet brown sugary um, sort of thing. So um, yeah, the the um how would you say the for me the the backbone of this beer is like a fresh kind of rye bready bread crust in there i think it's going to be the the crystal that's going to give you that um so yeah you've got that rye bready bread crust in there you absolutely do have a little bit of like woody there's a little bit woody and a little bit nutty character coming out of this one as well but yeah lovely kind of big sweet brown rye bready characters coming out of this um then you have that kind of yeah you've got that white bready kind of note sitting on top of it you can smell a little bit of a cocoa nibby type quality coming out of this one and this is one of the things with the Scotch ales. I know that quite a lot of uh, some brewers will use chocolate malts, other, other breweries won't. I think it's something you have to be very, very careful with because if you use the chocolate malts, you get a lot of dryness out of, the, out of these beers. Um, whereas for me, the Scotch ale is always a more brown sugary leaning beer actually. If you want to try some classic Scottish examples of this, of course, the main one to go for uh, would be 
the Old Jock from Broughton Brewery, Scotland's first craft brewery. A Skull Splitter from uh, Orkney Brewery is another very, very good one. And if you want something a bit more modern, then Old Parochial from uh, Tempest Brewery in Gala Shields. Those are three must-try Scottish brewed Scotch ales. Uh, there's probably a few others these days as well from uh, kind of newer breweries and things. But yeah, this one for me, the chocolate kind of stands out a bit. You have a little bit of that kind of cocoa nibby dryness in this one. But then above that, you've got some really nice... Um, above that, yeah, you've got some really nice kind of uh, leathery brown sugars, which makes me wonder, have they used a little bit of a longer wort boil with this? The colour would suggest yes, but you know, the chocolate malt is also playing a role in giving you that dryness. So there's a bit of leathery brown sugar. There's a wee bit of a... Um, yeah, a wee bit of leathery brown sugar. There's a wee bit of... Um, there's a wee bit of like a kind of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy thing got, sort of going on. And I'm getting a wee bit of a kind of biscuity note out of it, which I think is going to be the crystal malt. It's giving you, there are various types of uh, of crystal malt in this one, uh, or in uh, in general, sorry. This one, I'm not sure exactly what type of crystal malt they're using. But yeah, this one really has quite a little bit of kind of dryness and leatheriness to it in terms of its, uh, its notes. So I'm curious to see how that plays out in the flavour. I think we've said everything we need to about the malty side of the beer. The yeasty side of the beer comes across as being quite, um, yeah, more leaning toward that kind of brown bready character rather than anything else which isn't a surprise now on the hoppy side of things um you do get a nice little bit of smooth earthiness out of this one there's a little touch of herbal character there and you've also got some nice you've got a little bit of floral character and some nice kind of bright uh grassiness as well actually so i really do like how that um i really like how that all pieces together as well so um yeah the way that this one goes together I think is, is really nice in that sense but you can definitely smell it's German hop rather than English hop because the grassiness is just a bit brighter whereas you know the English hops have a bit more herbal and earthy character than this does uh, than the Hallertau Mittelfru does of course I should say but yeah on the fruity side of things this is kind of interesting and it shows you how hops behave in different ways when they're put in different malt bases because you know I would never think to use Hallertau Mittelfru in this style uh, as I said but the, it's really giving you some really nice kind of juicy figgy notes. It's giving you some uh, like black currants. There's black currants in there. There's juicy figs. Um, there's also some nice like plummy notes as well, which is um, which is great. Uh, yeah, the way everything pieces together in this one, I think, is uh, is really nice. So yeah, I really do like how this. Um, how this pieces together actually uh, yeah the fruitiness is, is quite wet and quite clean in a sense too this is really interesting I'm curious I'm really curious just to see how this plays out in terms of flavor so like I say aroma wise this one gives you all the sorts of things you expect but if you're familiar with the Scottish version uh, this the traditional Scottish brood uh, version of this style this one that you notice the little subtleties that are different because of the German ingredients uh, but as I say I've had scotch ales from Chile New Zealand uh, the states you know all the corners of the globe and they've always been they're usually pretty well done so I'm sure this one will be the same so as I always say take a bit of time to enjoy that aroma before you get stuck in but we're going to try this one now so yeah this is the scotch ale 7% ABV from uh, Two Rabbits Brewing Company in Omihachiman, Shiga, Japan. Slanja, Skoll, cheers, Kampai. Yeah. So, <clears throat> that's pretty good <laughs> and that's pretty damn close um, to what you would get in Scotland actually it's one of the more uh, kind of bready yeah I think that's fair to say it is one of the more kind of bready leaning um, scotch ales that I've had it's a little bit kind of you know you try this style from the traditional type breweries at home and then you also get it from the more kind of modern craft breweries this one actually does remind me a wee bit of um, of old jock it's got that nice breadiness 
It's got the nice kind of brown sugary character as well. And it's just really well balanced. It gives you a bit of everything. It's a very well rounded uh, beer, this one. So it gets a thumbs up from me. Um, I think they've done a good job of it. And this is what I like about Two Rabbits is they will try different styles. They'll give them full, you know, they'll take the approach of giving it a very full flavor and they'll pull it off very, very well. So yeah, I think I need to try some stronger beers from these guys, you know, it'd be cool to try some like Imperial Stouts and Barley Wines and things like that, but I'm not 100% sure if they've done that many of those. But yeah, they've done, they do a good Scotch ale, we can certainly say that. So let's just break the beer down and describe it for you a wee bit more in depth as we always do. And as you'll know if you watch the channel before, I'm a sucker for these big brown sugary um, sweet things, you know, Dunkel's, Doppelbox, Scotch Ales, Barley Wines, Belgian Quadruples is the other one. Um, I love these beers, the, the Dusseldorf Alt beers as well can be very interesting and uh, yeah, the Icebox too, I love those. Uh, but yeah, this is great. So let's just start on that middle third of the palate as we always do. The backbone of your beer, you've got that lovely kind of fresh brown bready, like rye bready bread crust in there. So, the brown bready rye bread, the brown bready rye bready bread crust there is the backbone of the beer. And as you move further forward on the middle, uh, as you move further forward on that middle third of your palate, you get a nice little bit of woodiness uh, in there. So yeah, nice little bit of woodiness, a little bit of nuttiness that comes out into the aftertaste as well. Then above the bread crusty layer, you start to feel that kind of dense, sweet, um, kind of brown rye bready character. Uh, so yeah, the bready character is really thick and very sweet actually, but yeah, definitely, definitely German. It's the crystal that's giving you that. So the brown bready character kind of sits there. Then above that, you can feel the, the little chocolate malty layer in there and it's quite like a dry cocoa nibby sort of thing, but I think they've got the ratio of the, um, the chocolate malt in this one just right because it, it's, it's just a very subtle addition. As I say, for me, the Scotch ale should be a more brown sugary, like a leathery brown sugary leaning flavour profile. I quite often disagree with tasting notes um, for Doppelbox and, and things like that that say chocolate because uh, yeah for me it is always more about the uh, the brown sugary flavours but they've got this very well balanced so we're not going to say too much more about it um, but yeah you get this little kind of dry cocoa nibby layer then above that you can feel the brown sugars um, so you have this above the kind of chocolatey, the cocoa nibby layer, you've got a kind of circle there in the middle of your palate, which is, um, yeah, you've got this a circle there in the middle of your palate, which is a more leathery, uh, brown sugary sort of thing. Uh, and I do wonder, I'd love to see the brew sheet and see how long of a wort boil they've done with this because it really gives you a little bit of that leathery sort of thing. And that's the characteristic that you get if you, you know, you go beyond the sort of 90 minute mark with your warp boil. So yeah, leathery brown sugary layer. Then you've got a circle in the middle of your palate, which is, uh, it's like a, a, on the next layer up, it's like Werther's original butter candy, butterscotch, and then in the dead center of your tongue, you've got this really nice, um, yeah, you have this really nice kind of sweet caramelly note, which is great. So, yeah, the wee caramelly note you get out of this one is um, it's quite nice, and that's the concentration of the, the booze there. But yeah, you can feel the further into the aftertaste that you go, it gives you a little bit more of a kind of, uh, yeah, it definitely gives you a little bit more of that uh, sweet kind of, it just gives you a little bit more of that nutty and woody 
and this coming out of the beer and it gives you a wee bit of sweetness too so that's really nice uh, but yeah that's the middle third of your palate done let's go to the back third of your palate and as i often say the further back on the palate that you go the drier the flavors will get the sweeter flavors tend to come out more further forward and the back third of your palate will give you similar flavors to the middle third of your tongue just at different intensities so the border region between middle and back third of your palate there you've got the nice kind of rye brown bready uh base in there then the white bready character sitting above that um and yeah as you go into the back third of the palate you can feel the bread crust um the kind of brown bread bread crusty layer in there then above that you have the um You've got the rye brown bready sort of thing, and you can feel that layer is a little bit lighter and a little bit more airy. Then you have a slightly white, like well, more of a wholemeal brown bready character above that, actually. And again, you can feel that layer is a bit lighter and a bit more kind of airy and dry and things like that, too. So, um, yeah, it's good. Uh, I really like that. But, um, yeah, the further back... Or, or as you go further on top of that, you can feel some of the kind of drier aspects of the brown sugar just creeping over the top of that um, that back third of your palate. Then you get the yeasty notes coming out of it, which I think are is great. So yeah, so yeah. Um, On the yeasty side of things then, the yeast that sits on top of everything else, you get that sweet wholemeal brown bready doughy ball in the middle uh, of everything on that back third, of your, uh, on the top of that back third of your palate. Then you get a wee bit of like a, a honeycomb character wrapped around it, just a wee bit of dry woodiness into the aftertaste. So definitely you can feel the flavour is taller on the back third of your palate, then as you move further forward into the middle third of your tongue it just kind of condenses down. And squashes together that little bit more so um, yeah the way that that pieces together I think is, is really nice the malty and yeasty side of this beer is done very very well um, and that's the kind of quint that's the thing you need to get right in it to do a good scotch and they certainly have flavor profile wise I'd say the more that I drink of it I'm tempted to say it leans toward the, the kind of 90 shilling uh, side of the spectrum but you know I have ha I've actually had um, 90 shillings that aren't as full in the flavour as this uh, but it's not I mean it's nowhere near as heavy as some of the 160s obviously such as the uh, the Tracker House 160 which is a beautiful beer that's another traditional one I should have I should have mentioned to you but um, yeah the way that this uh, the way that these be this beer goes together I think is it's really nice and it's well done and um, on the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of earthiness in there as you move further forward, it's got a little touch of herbal character. And as you push further forward towards the uh, the kind of front corners of your palate, you get a little bit of floral character and then some nice smooth and bright grassiness there around the front curve of the tongue. So, yeah, I like that about this one. So, yeah. That was um, the the green yeah the green component though as I say definitely German uh, not quite as herbal and earthy as you would expect from Bramling's Cross for example so definitely German nice bright grassiness there but let's focus on that front third of your palate then and the fruity side of the beer to round off the tasting so border region between front third and middle third of your palate you get a nice little bit of bready build up in there again you've got the kind of brown rye bready character on the base the sort of wholemeal bready character on top. And the base of that front third of your palate, the bread crust is there, a bit brighter, a bit sweeter. Then you've got the wholemeal, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you get the rye bready sort of thing. You've got a little bit of the kind of, you get the rye bready layer, the wholemeal brown bready layer. Then you get that nice oily bubble where the fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So let's look at the, the fruity esters then. So the the fruity esters for me are quite nice you do get a little touch of this kind of phenolic thing like in that border region between front third and middle third you do get a little bit of that almost like slightly christmas puddingy sort of thing it kind of reminds me a wee bit of what you get from the belgian brewings and the quadruples actually i think i'm i think they maybe use a little bit of brew sugar in this 
just going from that slightly phenolic taste that the beer has. And I don't think that's really normal with the Scotch ale. So that's somewhere, that's another way that this beer kind of deviates very slightly. But yeah, on the, uh, on the front third of your palate, um, at the back, you're getting a wee bit, it's quite oily and plummy. You've got some prunes underneath and a little bit of a kind of sultana type note as well. There's a bit of date and sultana under there. And as you move further forward, toward the middle of that front third of your palate, you get a wee bit more of a kind of oily figgy note coming out of the beer. And you've also got a wee touch of like black currant uh, coming out of this one too. So yeah, lovely kind of black currant-y character. And then, yeah, black currant-y notes. And then maybe just, there's maybe some other kind of like just juicy berry in there sitting on top of it but i don't want to say blackberries because it's just not sharp and tart enough for that but yeah the fruity side of this beer plums prunes a little bit of date a little bit of fig and then uh yeah a little bit of fig and um yeah a little bit of black currant as well i think that kind of is everything we need to say about the fruity side of the beer but it's very nice um on the mouthfeel side of things this is actually one of the more kind of oily and dry beers that I've had in uh, in Japan when I think about it. Um, and it's a, it's a nice change of pace. So for me, this beer, uh, yeah, it's kind of pushing top end of mid-bodied, bottom end of full-bodied. It's got an impressive thickness to it for being only 7%. The carbonation is very smooth. Um, like I said, it's quite oily, but you can still feel the cleanliness of the Japanese water in this. I've said this many a time about Japanese beers. The cleanliness of the water all, always gives them a little bit of that drinkability. Um, and you really you really do get that in here. So you've got that big dry oiliness underneath, but then you get that nice cleanliness from the water. In terms of IBUs, it's a bit hard to place this beer. I think it's probably about 25-ish something like that but you could easily you can easily kind of conflate the dryness uh with the bitterness in this one there's not a lot there, there's very little hoppy bitterness in this a lot of the bitterness you're getting is is it's more of a dryness from the malty character into the aftertaste but the malt base as we said you've got the graininess underneath the smoothness in the middle and the dry sweetness on top then you also have that lovely big kind of oily fruity note coming out of the beer as well so yeah i think this one kind of pieces together and really quite nicely so it gets a big thumbs up from me um yeah very interesting take on the scotch ale it's given me a lot of food for thought this um but the question should always be is it good and is it true to style yes um so i hope they bring this one back and i'd be very curious to see them do like a, a bigger one because this is like a 90 shilling i would love to see them do a kind of big you know 10 percent ish 160 shilling because they're on to they have got a solid base with this beer so do a bit i would say to them do a bigger one Maybe try and barrel age it as well, actually, and see what you get. Um, could be quite interesting if you put this in a cognac barrel or something like that because of the way the fruitiness comes out. But, uh, yeah, very good stuff from uh, Two Rabbits Brewing Company once again. So, yeah, happy that I've got another a good source of Scotch ale here in Japan now. So, uh, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Two Rabbits Brewing Company as well. And we will definitely return to these guys at some point very soon. Black IPA in the little fridge outside waiting to be reviewed. So we'll see about getting that done before I head back to Hong Kong. But till then, slange it, Scott. Cheers, check out my social media. Check out Two Rabbit Brewing social media. And we'll see you guys in the next review. Tomorrow is the Hogmanay review. So catch you on that one. Cheers.